Hey everyone, welcome to the third lecture of AWS Organizations and Control Tower series. And in this lecture, we will try to understand the concept of AWS landing zone. So we are in search of few answers regarding why landing zone, how many accounts you need in an enterprise, what about your security standards, guardrails, how to set up such concept in your entire environment, can you customize it, right? So landing zone in general, it's a solution provided by AWS that basically helps customer to set up their account properly with the best cloud practices model. When I say best cloud practices model, it includes your shared services from where you can control your CI CD processes and rest of the other stuff. Then log archive, a centralized logging account, security can be controlled from a different account and everything is associated with your master account. So in this architectural diagram, if you see, we have a master account on the top, which is your root account, payer account, or master account, where we have set up our AWS organization. We are controlling the single sign on because let's say if you have hundred accounts, 200 accounts, then you don't need to have your IAM credential specific to those accounts created. Everything can be controlled from AWS single sign on. And I have already created a video, what AWS single sign on is all about, how we have integrated Azure AD with single sign on. The same concept goes with your managed active directory from your on-premises data center. So please go through that video because that concept will be coming into the later lectures. That's where we will be using our AWS single sign on concept too. Then you can create your baseline then we can also use a service catalog. It's a service from AWS that helps us to, you know, provision a lot of different uh, factors within AWS. And at the bottom, we have shared services. Again, uh, you can use shared services as an example, CI CD processes. You, if you want to control the entire organization CI CD processes from one account, then shared services will come into picture. Log archive account, another, uh, best practices. It's like if you are having a cloud trail, so it's not good practice to store the cloud trail of local account to the same S3 bucket area. It's better you create a separate account, centralize everything at one place so that if impact happens to your workload accounts, then at least you will be able to understand what is happening with the help of those logs. So log archive account is from that concept. Then we can control everything from the security account where let's say Amazon guard duty or security hub, or as a matter of fact, any other services like shield advance or shield firewall services, you can enable at different account level, like make this account as a delegated administrator, which I have covered as part of the guard duty, where I've created one account as a guard duty administrator, which is basically a security account and controlling everything from one account, like hundred accounts are getting consolidated at one place to see all the relevant data. Okay. So that's what we will be going to learn about landing zone in this lecture. So why landing zone? Again, very important question. Why landing zone, right? So landing zone, there's a reason behind having a landing zone because when you are trying to adopt a cloud, right? Which is basically where you have to accelerate to the path of migrations, then landing zone act as a controlled secure foundation where you can quickly deploy new applications and services without having spend of time to configure the bare essential stuff like your cloud trail organizations and get building on those particular environment. This means that you have more time left over to innovate and accelerate your core business. So that's why landing zone is very helpful. Now, if you remember, if you have gone through the lectures, then in AWS organization, the lecture one of this series, I mentioned, uh, it's better to have a multi account model environment into your system, right? So make one production account, one testing account, one, uh, dev account. Don't put all together into one account because that creates a lot of dependency on one account. And if that account gets hacked, then you will be going to lose each kind of data. 
So that's why the multi-tier model comes into picture. I can create different, different accounts by myself. So I'll relate everything to the organization. And from there, I can also relate all the different accounts. I can create a security account, log archive account, share services, network account. I can do that with the help of organization. But there are like few manual process involved over there. Again, there is other way where you can also automate the entire process for account creation with the help of Lambda and service catalog. But those things you are getting with the help of landing zone where you just give few simple set of configuration and you'll be able to get your account set up properly with the best practices model because few of the guardrails gets pushed out to as part of the best practices to each of the account. Now there is a, uh, there is one thing which I want to mention over here, which I will be mentioning in the control tower section as well. When you are starting your business, right on AWS cloud, it's better to start with control tower or landing zone because when you start control tower, you have to go through landing zone where it creates multiple accounts for you with the best practices model and guardrails gets pushed out like a service control policy is a standard one get pushed out to each of your uh, member accounts basically. So, but when you have, let's say 500, 600 accounts or 100, 200, 300 account where each of the accounts are working on their own separate uh, service control policies or they are not in sync as well, then moving towards landing zone create, I'm not saying we can't move towards landing zone or control tower. As a matter of fact, we can move towards that, but you have to give lot of efforts in doing so. Again, this is my experience that I'm talking about over here, but yeah, we will uh, look into that too. Design for businesses who wish to set up multi-account environment, but lack of time, knowledge to configure several accounts and services. The same problem that we are uh, removing over here, because let's say I'm new to the cloud, right? So in that case, I would rely on the cloud vendor to help me out with the best practices model because I'm new to cloud, right? I don't know much of the stuff. I don't know a lot of different configuration. So it's better rely on AWS to help us with the help of landing zone where it can create multiple accounts, log security and other different accounts as part of the best practices. Now, this is one of the documents related to the perspective guidance of uh, AWS account where we can uh, check and everything like how you can uh, build up landing zone, basic idea about landing zone. So I'll share this link as well in the description section. Let's understand what landing zone is all about. Again, uh, whatever we have learned in why is the same concept is coming for what? Because landing zone follows the well-architected model, multi-account AWS environment that is scale and secure. So again, the same point is it follows the AWS well-architected framework where it provides you a better model of security, service control policies, guardrails and everything over there. This is starting point from which your organization can quickly launch, deploy your workload and application with confidence, your security and infrastructure environment, same stuff. So again, I'm going back to my previous point, why landing zone is required just to remove the overhead of making different, different accounts, configuring different, different accounts by yourself and pushing out the guardrails, the security practices. So that is one thing and removing the rest of the other challenges that what we face while do, uh, creating different accounts and add it to the organization. Landing zone is helping us over there. Building a landing zone involves technical and business decisions and made across the account structure, networking, security, access management in accordance with your organization, growth and business goal. When you start your AWS at scale, then you can look at for the perspective guidance with AWS, what they are giving an approach for establishing your environment. The best practices in this area center around the need to isolate the resources and workload. So let me go back to my first, uh, architecture diagram over here, what we have for the landing zone, separate your workloads basically. Now this is all these three accounts come under core OU because we consider making your infrastructure 
different and making your workload like your production workload based upon your business unit. Like one department will get dev test and prod. Another department might not need the prod environment, dev and test, something like that. So segregate your workload on a different account, but as part of the core organization unit, you should use shared services. Again, uh, depend upon uh, how big your organization is, whether you want to really control one of the example like CICD processes from one account to all your different when uh, different models basically. Then log archive is very important because uh, from the audit perspective, you should be uh, showing up from uh, one account like all these accounts are uh, doing all these stuff and security. So guard, ray, uh, guard duty or security hub and all those stuff. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of why landing zone is required, what all things uh, we are looking from the landing zone and what landing zone is. Now in terms of the solution, what solutions available for landing zone in AWS, we have two. One is control tower and you can also do this with AWS organization. Basically a customer built own managed environment, right? Let's see the benefits and the trade-offs. Benefits for control tower, it's a fully managed service. So we don't have to worry about the backend environment. We just have to use it and rest will be maintained and managed by AWS. AWS provided guardrails and compliance policies are applied by default. That's another thing. The guardrails gets pushed out. The policies, the default one get pushed out to all the accounts. Central dashboard for monitoring and compliance also showing the status of that. Account factory for provisioning new accounts. So basically uh, there is something called a concept of account factory, uh, a vending machine basically where it uses that to create new accounts. So these are the things, the benefits that what we are getting with control tower. On the other side with AWS organization, you can use your custom built solution. So for most of the uh, client, AWS control tower works. For few of the clients, AWS control tower not works. So as I mentioned, right, uh, if you are starting your business on AWS, then you should go with control tower based upon the best practices and everything. But if you already have a lot of tons of accounts, right, then I would recommend to play around with organizations because the guardrails and the policies, the default one, what control tower pushes out, I guess it's once enabled cannot be disabled. That's one thing. So you have to, you know, understand the environment, what you already have. And if you're starting from scratch, I always recommend control tower. On the trade-off side, extensive and customizations are provided so we can do customizations on AWS. Control Tower is supported in AWS region. Now I have showed you the AWS regions as well. Customer or partner owns all the development and the coding. That's what AWS organization is totally a custom built environment. Customer or partner is responsible for integration and implementation. So that's how uh, it works, the solution what we have in AWS for landing zone. So based upon your requirement, uh, you can go with that. I always suggest starting from scratch, best option, go with control tower. If you have tons of account, think of a solution twice. You can get the same sort of benefits with AWS organization, but you have to deal with uh, efforts and everything, what kind of implementation, then integration needs to be done as part of the best practices model. If I see the benefits of landing zone, so obviously the biggest features and benefits are improved security controls. Then you are getting a centralized management data isolation, which is very important for, you know, uh, maintaining the permission boundaries, maintaining the data boundaries with, with the help of security policies and everything. This is very important because for every company, Security must be the first priority, right? Then improve visibility. So obviously it's a clear vision that you are doing these, these things as part of the best practices and you can set the limitations. So by separating each environment in a different account, you are able to set the limits on the cloud services, which prevents them consuming too much and 
in terms of the money performance not the performance in terms of money basically and let me say me potential over provisioning so sometime i have seen clients using one account or let's as a matter of fact multiple accounts and they used to provision a lot of uh, ec2 instances but at certain point of time in the back end obviously there is a limit some some are soft limits some are high, hard limits soft limit can be increased with the help of aws support hard limits cannot be increased right because the feature is still not available for the customers so in the in that case you have to control the over provisioning when you do over provisioning you are spending a lot of cost as well a good example is having a sandbox account where developers can test limited number of resources that are linked to a budget control so business can avoid overspending of money and over provision of resources so that's what uh, basically the benefit that we are getting from the landing zone so i hope now this clears a lot in terms of why landing zone is required the concept of landing zone the segregation of account why this is required then obviously uh, how you can implement it that i will show you in to, in the practical demo when i will be doing the control tower because uh, let me show you actually let me log in to my aws account this is my aws account if i type aws control tower aws control tower go over here and this is something you can provision in any of the region so basically uh, you can consider that region as your home environment for you setup right and control tower is available in all these regions california is still not there asia pac so these are still not enabled now here you can see set up and govern your multiple accounts aws environment and that's where you have landing zone so that's why i wanted to cover the landing zone with the help of control tower demo because it takes time and that's where i don't want to club everything at one place right so let's go back to our presentation this is what uh, this lecture is all about in next lecture i will be talking about the concept of accounts basically that will help you to clear like why all these three or what are the you know importance of shared services log archive security or network account why we need to do such kind of configuration with us in terms of landing zone or control tower so place out a comment in comment section if you are facing any issue in understanding the concept i'll be there to help you i will see you in next lecture have a nice day bye bye